Follow along as we build a fitting tribute to the Land Rover Defender. This series is brought to you by LR Center Limited and Frost Auto Restorers. Hello, welcome back to the third episode of our Land Rover Defender tribute build series. We have been away, we've been uh, doing a road trip around Europe, so we're back, ready, we're raring to go. We've had quite a number of deliveries over the last few weeks. First off, we had this set of five Goodyear MTR tyres delivered. Land Rover have apparently bought basically all of the remaining stock of these tyres, so they're getting harder to come by. They only just fit inside the jack. We've also had the large number of parts delivered from LR Center Limited, so that should keep us building for quite some time. This episode, we are finally getting around to painting the chassis, and we've been talking about it for a while. The first episode we put out, um, nobody seemed to make any suggestions that we shouldn't paint the chassis, which I thought was interesting, because generally, if you look on forums and things like that on the internet, Land Rover forums, uh, if you talk about painting a Galf chassis, you get somebody who bursts in, oh, why are you painting your Land Rover chassis? And um, there's three reasons why we're doing it. They say, what's the point? Zinc chassis never rust. That's not true. Zinc galvanizing is a sacrificial process, so over time the zinc is actually designed to corrode and uh, diminish rather than the steel that it's protecting. And so eventually, There'll be no zinc left, steel corrode, and as you can see in this picture from uh, Black Paw 4x4, that's a, a gal chassis that hasn't been looked after. So eventually it will rust. By painting it, hopefully we can protect the zinc that bit longer, make it last longer. I mean, a, a gal chassis will last longer than a standard untreated chassis, but we want to make this future proof. That's one of the, the train of thoughts of painting a chassis, is to protect it that little bit more and we'll be going full works on this, painting it uh, with a nice satin factory top coat and then rust proofing it with Dinatrol products as per usual. Second reason is if you've got a bare gal chassis then it's obvious that you've got a gal chassis and that is apparent to uh, thieves and it could well stand out so we don't want that. I don't want to attract undue attention, I want the Land Rover to look standard which leads me into number three, it looks more standard and that is what we're trying to aim for obviously factory finish something that could have just rolled off the land of a factory uh, line having a nice standard looking vehicle is what we are aiming for so that's why we're painting it before carrying out any work on the chassis you'll need to securely support it we're using four axle stands others may use a, a block and tackle on a gantry or even just blocks of wood whatever you use make sure it is safe Okay, so the first step, I'm just examining the, the galve itself. When you hot dip galvanize a chassis, um, it's quite difficult to avoid getting kind of these imperfections in it, but also little spikes of, of zinc material. So Richard Chassis very kindly go around and ream out all of these holes so that you don't have to do that yourself. There's no extra material in there, but there are some of these little spikes and imperfections which could show through the top coats and uh, obviously we don't want that so I'm just going to go around and gently file these off that's step number one only lightly file spikes and be careful not to file straight through the zinc coating we're aiming for a high standard of finish so it's worth spending a little extra time until you're happy with the chassis having removed these imperfections next stage we'll use the chassis clean which has been provided for us by Frost Auto, so a big thank you to them. We will use this on every surface of the galvanized chassis to strip off the grease. It's a road traffic film remover and it's an alkaline solution, so make sure you wear gloves, masks to protect your skin. Using a brush or sprayer, apply the chassis clean. As a chassis can pick up a lot of grease and oil during manufacturing and transport, a brush can help agitate the surface, resulting in a 100% clean surface for the next step. As evidence of how important cleaning your chassis is, after about 5 minutes we had to swap the detergent because it had become so dirty and contaminated. 
Then wash off the detergent and leave the whole chassis to dry. As we discussed in our rust proofing video, the internal cavities of a chassis can be damp for days or longer, so allow time to fully air the internals. Okay, so the next stage is to apply the tea wash or mordant solution. What happens about 24 hours after galvanizing is a layer of oxidization forms on the chassis and that prevents your paint from adhering correctly because it's very unstable. It takes about six months to a year for this oxidization to stabilize. And in the meantime, if you apply paint to it, well then when it changes and goes through a different oxidization process, top layer comes off along with your paint, which has been applied to that oxidization. So the mordant solution strips away any unstable oxidization that's formed, takes us back to a stable layer that we can paint straight onto. It does also change the color of the zinc, which is helpful because um, it shows us where we've applied the solution properly. So you paint it straight onto the uh, galve. It will change color from the shiny silver to a sort of dull black or gray that looks kind of like the chassis being in the fire. Don't worry, that just makes it easier for us to paint. It gets away all the problems that you would have had had you not done it, i.e. you paint far enough. So it's the only correct way to kind of cheat uh, waiting about a year or six months for the zinc to properly stabilize. You can spray it or brush it on. We're going to brush it on. Uh, if you do spray it, make sure you have all the proper safety equipment in place and do it in a ventilated area because tea wash is quite fumy and uh, lets off a lot of not nice chemicals. After about 10 to 15 minutes of the tea wash sitting on the chassis, we should be able to wash it off and let it dry. Once again, we'll leave the chassis overnight to air off after having blasted it off with the air compressor to just speed the process along and also manually tilting the chassis to let trapped water drain off. Once dry, we can etch prime the surface. The etch primer we're using is mixed one to one with an activated thinner. Etch primer is a mix of acid and primer that chemically bonds or etches to bare metal and alloys, improving the key for subsequent layers. Be careful with any two pack product as it contains isocyanates that are highly toxic. Ideally, you would use an air fed mask when working with any two pack product to avoid sensitization. First, apply a light misting of the etch primer before building up the coat. You don't need too much. To paint the top side, we had to lift the chassis off the stands using an engine crane. Then leave the whole lot to cure. It's during the drying process that the acid etch is actually doing its work. Okay, so now we've etch primed the chassis. We let that cure fully for at least, at very minimum, 24 hours because the number one problem people have painting over etch primer is they don't leave it long enough and the solvents that are still working their way out of the coating can uh, ruin the subsequent paint layer. Then we're going to top coat it with some of the Frost's Extreme Chassis Black. Really tough paint this, really good quality stuff and uh, we're going to cover the whole chassis in it. It'll cure to a satin finish that will look exactly like a chassis does when it rolls off the Land Rover factory line. We're using aerosols for this because it's just a little bit easier to set up and uh, two of us can get going on the painting process. Because we're going to be using aerosols for quite a long length of time, there's a lot of nooks and crannies on the chassis, it's well worth getting one of these. Now this is called a can gun, there's a few other types you can buy online. It clicks onto the top of the aerosol tin, in fact we used it in our dinner troll video, and it gives you a, an adjustable grip which you can squeeze, it's very ergonomic. It lets you do like half pressure on an aerosol tin and it stops your finger from cramping up and hurting. Whenever you're spraying with aerosols, make sure you maintain that 15 to 30 centimeters distance. It allows all the contents, the paint mixture to aerosol properly to disperse and you get a really consistent, even finish. You're a lot less likely to get runs in the paint and then as it dries, we get this absolutely fantastic satin effect that we meant to because we've applied it in a consistent thickness. Frost high performance chassis paint has left us with a flawless and bulletproof satin finish. It looks impeccable. We'll apply a second coat of the paint and then leave the whole lot to cure over a couple of warm days. And that's the chassis painted. Let's get on to the ancillary parts. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Fun Rover TV. 
You can see our last episode here and also check us out on funrover.com. We are at funrover on Twitter and Instagram and we're also on Facebook.